There are a lot of ways to mask hair. Some good, some bad. What I'm about to show you is brilliant. Takes little effort and delivers fantastic results down to the last wispy strands of hair. Now our goal, of course, is perfect hair masking, which is actually a combination of blending and masking working together, by the way. And because I really want you to understand what's going on, I've broken it down into seven steps. So for starters here, we're going to jump the hair layer, make a copy of it. You'll see that, but that's Control J, Command J on a Mac. And then we're going to apply the desired blend mode to the first original version of the image, then desaturate the image, that's an optional step, and adjust the brightness and contrast. We're gonna start with those four steps and then we'll get to the other three because they're incidental by comparison as you're about to see. And so we're gonna start with this studio portrait shot, a real actual photograph, by the way, from the Dreamstime image library, link in the description. And notice that her hair is relatively combed, but we have all these wonderful hairs that are just, you know, the, the, the wild hairs as well to work with. And we're going to set her against this otherworldly background, kind of otherworldly. I created it using Adobe Firefly just because you can use any background you want. And I wanted to delight your senses as we work through this project. And if you do the masking and the blending properly, you can set this image against any background as I've done right here and notice how I'm maintaining all the hairs, all these wonderful hair details all around her head. Almost every single hair is intact. And by the way, this does not involve AI. This does not involve any hand brushing, no hand work whatsoever, by the way. This is all old school Photoshop. And so because it's a combination of blending and masking working together, you need two copies of your layer. So I'm going to jump her to a new layer like so. So we have two copies, Control J, Command J on a Mac. And the purpose of the first layer is blending. So I'll call it that. And the purpose of the second layer is masking. So we're not going to harm the image at all, by the way. I'll go ahead and turn off the masking layer, click on the blending layer. And now it's a matter of assigning a blend mode. Well, she is set against a gray kind of mottled background, which means, which presents its own complexity. Even though it's kind of a plainish background, it's not so clean as a white background or a green screen or something like that, or a blue screen even. And so what that means is there is no point at which she is clearly different from her background. I mean, we can see it, but but in other words, on the right hand side, on the right, her, our right hand side of her head, the hairs are generally brighter than the background, generally, by the way. And then on the left hand side, they are generally darker than the background. And so what we really care about, we're, we're, we're not going to be able to make the colors work in our favor. In other words, we can't assign, for example, under the select menu, we can't, we're not going to get very far with the color range command, even though it's a really great command. And what we want to do is maintain detail. And so we need contrast. And the contrast modes are these guys right here. This is the blend mode pop-up menu. They start with overlay. They end with hard mix. You're not really going to find any use for that one. But the ones we want to use are, are overlay or hard light. Let's just limit our focus to those two because overlay is going to blend away the grayishness and keep all the contrast, but it's going to favor the background. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. But first, just take it. I know this isn't anywhere near where, what we want it to look like, right? This is the final version of the image. This is uh, the slideshow, just in case you wanted to see that again. And this is the uh, where we are so far. But we've got some nice hairs going on. That's really wonderful, delightful, and so forth. But a lot of stuff is dropping out. Like, for example, the shadow hairs are not keeping up. And that's because overlay emphasizes the stuff below the active layer. If you want to emphasize the details in the active layer, then you switch to hard light. Overlay's opposite, that is to say, which is hard light. So notice that went ahead and emphasized the foreground image. And we now have this wonderfully defined light hair up here. Over here as well, we have some good hair detail over on the left, uh, right hand side. And then we have good shadow detail as well. So this is the difference. This is overlay right there. Notice the shadow detail just gets lost. And this is 
hard light. So looking a lot better. Now, the problem, of course, is that, well, there's a couple of problems. One is, you know, we're just we're we're losing her in the mix. She, she didn't just somehow magically blend into the background. But that's OK. All we care about, you know, choose your battles at this point. All we care about is the hair. She will follow the interior of the image will follow when we apply the masking. But when we've got the problem is, let me turn this layer off for a moment. Look, watch the background, especially the top right corner of the screen. Watch how it gets brighter. That's how the image looked in the first place, the background image. It looks kind of bright and cheerful and now it looks gloomy and stormy and so forth. And that's because the gray is darkening the background. The gray, her gray background is darkening the background image. And we're also, we have all these aberrant colors all the place. Let's get rid of those aberrant colors. This is what I was saying by step three, desaturate the image. That's an optional step, but in our case, it's gonna work out beautifully. So watch how it just focuses in on the hairs. When I go up to the image menu, choose adjustments and choose desaturate, this guy right here. And now we're just left with the details, just a luminous detail, that's it. She turns blue, don't care. We're gonna reinstate her with a mask, but no, these little fine hairs all over the place and they're not somehow aberrantly affecting the colors of the background we're, we're not getting these hyper colors as we were seeing before that are just kind of oversaturated get that all right so i'll reapply that and now what we need to do we still have a problem with this foreground image the blending layer darkening the stuff in the background so we need to brighten this layer Real quick, even the most impeccable mask doesn't guarantee that your subject looks entirely credible against its new background. For example, want to take this image and make it look like this? Then join me at my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. And now, back to the finest in blending and masking hair in Photoshop. And I'm going to do so using an adjustment layer. Everybody's got their favorite way to apply adjustment layers. I'm just going to do it the really easy way by going to the layer menu, choosing new adjustment layer, and then choosing the guy I'm looking for is this one right here, brightness contrast. And that way, because I'm choosing the command, as opposed to the various other ways to work, I'm forcing the display of the new layer dialog box. And so I can call this guy just, you know, BC. The, the more important thing is I'm going to turn on use previous layer to create clipping mask. And that way we're affecting this layer only and we're maintaining the functionality of the hard light blend mode. Now, some of you may say, Deke, what? Hey, what are you doing? Why aren't you applying a curves adjustment layer? Curves is the only way to go. That's the only one. Whatever. That's so not true. Brightness contrast is actually going to work out beautifully for our purposes. And it, it's been about 20 years since they upgraded this command and made it good. And it works just, it's, it's analogous to the brightness contrast controls in Lightroom and Camera Raw. It's great. Click OK. And now what I'm going to do is crank up the brightness up to 70 is what I came up with. And then I'm going to crank the contrast up to 50 is what I'm looking for. Are these magic values? No, they're not. I just came up with them through trial and error where this image is concerned. And notice because it's clipped, it's just affecting this blending layer. And so if I turn off the blending layer, you can see that the, the the background image by itself and now if i turn it back on you can see that this area is not darkening nearly as much as it, it was before so so the background is remaining relatively unaffected not strictly speaking unaffected just relatively and relative to being horribly affected that is but look at those hairs i just want you to notice how great those hairs are looking at this point thanks to the combination of these two layers working together now Let's go. So I just adjusted the brightness and contrast. That was step four. Now we're off to the races with mask the jumped image. You'll see that that sounds like a complicated step. <laughs> it's comically easy. And then we'll choose select a mask, the so select a mask workspace, and we'll brush around the edges with the refine edge brush tool. All right. So here we go. I'm going to turn on that masking layer once again, click on it to make it active. And for some reason, I am not seeing... The contextual taskbar is what I was going to say, but now it's up on screen. You never know about this guy. All I'm going to do is click remove background. That's it. You may know it selects subject plus it masks the selection. That's all it does. So click remove background, which is a comically simple command, at least to apply. It's actually an amazing command in terms of what it does. Look what it did. It still maintained all those hairs, but thanks to the fact that we did all that work with the blending in advance, we're getting really 
really great results. So I'll just go ahead and zoom in on this detail up here. Look at that hair right there. I wasn't going to maintain that by masking, but if I turn off, let me turn off the blending layer. See how it kind of goes away. And th this is the masked stuff. We didn't have bad, but it's not half believable either. We have all this artifacting inside the hair. Now, the, the blending layer bolsters that hair like crazy, so we get much more, much better defined hair, so we get better edges as well. We still have some artifacting inside those hairs, so we need to work on that. And then down here, where the sort of the bottom left region of the image is concerned, we have a halo on her shoulder. We'll take care of that in a second. And we've got this gray that's left over from the background. That's a problem. And we're gonna address that using step six, the select and mask workspace right there. Just use that command and then we'll brush around the edges with refine edge brush tool. So you just got to go to select a mask, go to the select menu and choose select a mask. You can also see that because I'm working with the selection tool, select a mask is up here in the options bar. But at any rate, I'll choose a command and then we enter this magical workspace. It doesn't look like it's really, it doesn't, it's not looking that much different. Anyway, I'm going to zoom in right here for just a second because you can try out the refine hair button. But in my case, it doesn't really do anything good. Notice it just kind of makes this area tinny. Did you see how it just brightened up and became weird artificial hair? Andy Warhol hair, if you like, but I'm going to go ahead and undo that. It's like it's a silver wig or something. I undid that, by the way. It may work for you, so it's worth giving it a try. But what you really want to do is select the second tool down right here, the Refined Edge Brush Tool. Don't worry about all these controls, just ignore them. And then just go ahead, I'm making the brush bigger or smaller using the square bracket keys to the right of the P is the ball key. And then I'll just brush around the hair detail, including in hair, in here that is. So notice how the gray dropped away and now I'll brush along the shoulder to get rid of that artifact. And just so you can see the difference, notice this, this is before I did that brushing, this is after. So what's going on, just in case you're not really clear on how this tool works, what it's doing is you're defining an edge region in which you're asking Photoshop to reevaluate these edges. So you just want to brush around the edges. Don't brush in the interior. Notice what happens. I start creating a bunch of holes in the hair and I'm seeing the blue from the mountain background. I don't want that. Right next to her eye as well. Do you see that? I don't want that. So undo. Just brush around the edges. If you want to brush multiple times, you can try it. And then it's going to kind of give you a preview of what it thinks it's going to do. And then when you release, it's going to do the real thing. But just don't go deep. Don't go way into the hair. Just keep it on the outside edges. And once you've had enough, of the brushing then just go ahead and click OK and now you're gonna see a big difference I'll go ahead and zoom in here on this stuff and this is before and this is after well that's a small difference right actually it's pretty big this is this is uh, before after I, I forget now where I'm at in this uh, I'll bring up the history panel there's select a mask right there I want to make sure I'm doing my before and afters properly and now this is before and this is after. And so we're doing a better job of maintaining these hair details. We're thickening them up in some cases and making them finer in others. Notice this is this is before here. We had more of the hair color and this is after. We're ending up with more of that tinny stuff that I was talking about, that uh, fake kind of silver wig hair. But down here, this is way better. This is before with my selection outline. <laughs> this is after. And that's all there is to it, my friends. Those are those seven steps in practice from jumping your hair layer all the way down to brushing around the edges with the Refine Edge brush tool that gives you this amazing mask. This is the image as it started against its gray background and this is how it looks now against its new artificial home thank you so much for watching feel free to like subscribe and turn on notifications and don't forget to make your masked image look right at home against its new background join me at patreon.com slash deke now then go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter i'm deke mcclellan this is deke now